smooth. That was smooth. Hello. So we have an extreme. We have an extreme. Oh no. Do you have it open somewhere? I have it open somewhere. Let's try that again. <laughs> Rudra, sorry about that. Yeah, this is going for me as well. So My voice is uh, going for me as well. Yes. Um, anyway, we have an extremely special stream, and not just because I can't learn to mute my Twitch and YouTube streams. We have, this is the first. And we have Mycroft in the background. So, Rudra, you have a super special guest, too. Um, this is the first of our community hosted and driven streams. Reese and I, we are just here to be the introductory eye candy of sorts, I guess. To, yes, there you go. To introduce um, basically content that is totally going to be driven and hosted by the Ubuntu community. And so this is going to be on a variety of topics from getting started with streaming to all the aspects of contributing to the Ubuntu project. And so keep, uh, we are going to be posting a lot more a a about this. And so right now I want to turn it over to Reese, who's going to introduce our very first community host. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and introduce him, and then we're going to disappear. We're going to take ourselves off the stream, and it'll all be Rudra. So let me introduce everybody here to this side, to Rudra, project lead uh, for Unity, for the Unity, all the Unity things that are going on. I imagine, Rudra, you can introduce yourself before you get started anyway. Um, but yeah, good luck. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. And uh, let's. I'm going to go ahead and take me and Monica away and take it away, Rudra. So, uh, so I'm the creator and project leader of Ubuntu Unity Remix, and I'm also in the Unity Seven maintainers team. And as you were, uh, and uh, as you'd be aware, uh, Unity Seven was the default shell for GNOME used by Ubuntu uh, up until I believe 2017, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with the release uh, and with the release of 17.10. Uh, uh, yep, it was 17.10, not 18.04. Uh, it switched to uh, GNOME shell with a fork of Dash to Dock, uh, Ubuntu Dock. UD7 is no longer uh, maintained by Canonical, uh, although yes, we do have Marco Tivison from the desktop team who often contributes to it. And the UD7, uh, but it is uh, mainly maintained by, UD7, by the UD7 maintainers team and the community. So last year, uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, a number of members left the UD7 maintainers team, thus resulting in a slowdown of UD7's development. So uh, we had moved it to uh, we had moved it from Launchpad to GitLab a few months ago so that more people could contribute to its development. And we even got it to compile on the latest versions of Ubuntu, such as Ubuntu 304. So as you can see, we are actively maintaining uh, UD7 and we hope it and we hope people, uh, its development picks up pace again. Uh, we, are, we are mainly concerned about the increasing number of deprecated dependencies. Uh, which could make which would make it unusable in future, and as you as and as Compass is completely dead and UD7 uh, is a Compass plugin, uh, it would be really hard to uh, maintain both of them because Compass uh, the UD7 and Compass code bases are huge and hard to maintain, really huge. So uh, hats off to Kushi Dalam who's been working very hard to maintain Unity7. Uh, and you might want to join the Unity 7 maintainers team on Launchpad. Uh, so I was looking into developing the next version of Unity, uh, making use of the basic elements of Unity 7, and we call it Unity 10. It was earlier written in Valor, but has been rewritten in Fish. Uh, unlike Unity 7 and GNOME, uh, Unity 7 will not be a compass or Mata plugin, so that we can continue to develop it uh, without having to do a complete rewrite in future. So uh, many window managers uh, and compositors are catching up with composite effects. Uh, for example, Quinn has added many of the popular effects, such as wobbly windows, and Wayfire looks to be another suitable alternative to Compass with the same goal, uh, but it uses VLAN. Uh, it uses VLAN. Uh, one sec, let me take the chat. Yep. Hi, everyone. And 
So I've received a lot of requests uh, to use Wayfire and we'll be taking a look at it soon. We are trying to use Wayfire. Uh, so we are trying to add as many features uh, to Unity, uh, of Unity 7 uh, to Unity X as possible, such as, uh, yeah, I'll be working on implementing it in Unity, uh, Unity X. And uh, we are also taking a look at Wayfire, like I said earlier, which is this VLAN, but has many of the same effects as Compass and has the same goal. So uh, I'll be adding a number of features to UTX, and we already have a number of them already in UTX. For example, uh, Notify OSD, the notification diamond used in UT7, and the HUD, which we recently added to UTX. And this particular HUD even works with uh, GNOME apps, such as Nautilus, GNOME Builder, and Get It. So uh, we are, uh, I'll be adding a few features today as well, such as UT Control Center of some UT7 uh, and uh, but I'll, I'll also share the link for the UDX repository uh, in the chat. Uh, so you can easy, you can contribute to it and, and create a few more requests to fix a few bugs, minor bugs, or uh, like one one line bugs. So we send it. Yep. Oops, I sent it twice. Uh oh. Oh, it's sent to YouTube or Twitch and Twitch. Yep. Yeah, uh, so, so you can package and maintain Unity X for any for your favorite distro without taking a sweat because uh, unlike Unity Seven, uh, it doesn't have a number. It doesn't have so many dependencies that are specific to Ubuntu. So yes, you can easily uh, port it to some other distro, compile it for some other distro, and then package it for that. Uh, so let me share my screen once. Uh, so yeah, now before I proceed further, uh, let me reiterate that UTX is not intended to replace Unity 7 as many people were asking this uh, were asking this earlier. So uh, at least not as of now. And our aim is to bring it to feature parity with Unity 7 only so that Unity 7 users are not disappointed in case Unity 7 development uh, does not pick up and it becomes unusable in future because of deprecated dependencies like Compass. Uh, also note that UTX is currently in development and its final look and feel has not been finalized. So uh, let me start with setting up the build environment for uh, Unity X and Unity 7. So let's begin with Unity 7. Uh, so uh, for, like you mentioned earlier, we have moved Unity 7 from uh, Launchpad to GitLab. So it is very easier to, uh, to, to just clone the deposit in our Earlier, you need to set up an SSH key and import it into Launchpad to be able to use BCR in the first place. So, yeah. First of all, let's install the build dependencies, the basic ones. So sudo apt install build essential, which is a meta package containing a number of building tools such as GCC, the most popular C compiler, in my opinion. So, yep, my favorite one. And uh, Build Essential and Fake Zoot as well. And let's go with scripts because it contains a number of useful scripts for packaging stuff. So, yep, I believe I have, have it already installed. And Git, yep. Yes, so uh, it's already installed. So yeah, I already have it cloned, but let me show it here. So yep, get clone uh Lab Ubuntu, Unity, Unity 7, Unity, let me share the link in the chat as well for this as well. Yeah, and I hope this was the correct one. Um, let me clone this into Unity 7-2, so yeah. So Unity 7-2. So now uh, we can easily, uh, so now in the, uh, we can just run to the APT, uh, get uh, APT build dev dot, because to basically install all the build dependencies which have been mentioned in the Debian control file. So, here you go, yeah. So these are the build depends here. So we'll be installing them over to the APT build dev dot. 
So this is actually a dual boot setup. So yes, this is the other installation which I installed recently. So it doesn't have all those dependencies installed already and it will take a bit of time. So I won't be doing that here, but let me just explain a few, uh, a few of the, uh, a few simple bits here. So yup, uh, you, you might want to take a look at the hacking and install file here. This is the hacking file and install one and Up. And you'll also want to uh, create a build directory. So the, uh, in simple words here, you can here's how you can compile it. And and then a few of the components. So yeah, uh, you'll need to have UD7 already installed. So uh, MKD build, CD build, and CMake dot dot. Oh, by the way, uh, you'll also need to install CMake, which I believe I have already installed. But let me check. Yeah. So now uh, CMake dot dot. Yeah, so we have a number of missing dependencies because we didn't install those build dependencies earlier with us because it was very time consuming. So, uh, but uh, this is how you can do it in simple words. So yeah, you can just clone it. Earlier you'd have to, uh, and if so, you want the latest updates because the GitLab repo isn't up updated uh, so frequently, but yeah, so uh, in case you want the latest changes, you can uh, put on your SSH key or you can generate an SSH key and and you can uh, set up BZR on your machine. So I'll just share one handy, handy, handy link here. So, yep. That's it. Not bad. Yeah, so uh, earlier after setting that up, we can just use BC Avatar LP Unity. Uh, uh, I won't be going through the whole process right now because it's really time consuming. Like you'll have to generate an SSH key and then put it up on Launchpad and then you'll have to set up BCR and yep, one sec. Uh, yeah, that is yeah, one sec, let me check it. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's because it's a 1440p display. So yeah, uh, I hope it's visible. Uh, I hope it's visible now. Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, it's fine now. Uh, one second, let me check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, and... So yeah, uh, now you you can run BCR branch LP Unity or I'm used to the command BCR. I'm not sure if it's BCR, BCR but yeah. You can use BZ branch LP Unity. Uh, so you need to install it and you need to set up your SSH key. And uh, next, let's take a look at Unity. Uh, so let's, yeah, I'm in Unity X. So yeah, first of all, you'll want to use sudo su. Uh, once again, I've got a file. Okay. Yeah, so sudo su. Uh, you can uh, so now I'll just if you if you want you can create an opt directory uh, because it's, uh, because it's not a good idea to keep your tools in in your home directory and then send them and then sim link them to user bin so yeah I just I already have an opt directory so yeah so this is my setup so here uh, I can just you can just git clone quick dev which is basically an alternative to uh, the traditional uh, Debian packaging format uh, because it's really time consuming to package using the traditional one since it requires many files. So, yep, here we go. Lab, UD, oh, it's the JD. JD, X, quick dev. So, yeah, oh, I, already, I already have a clone. So, yes, you can oh, now do one thing oh, here. You can just sim link it. It's a web or uh, to use your bin. Yep, and by the way, uh, make sure that you put in uh, the present working directory. You can either use op here or if you can just use pwd because uh, otherwise it will be, I believe it will just send link to user bin, quick dev, quick dev. So leave it also, that's where let's go with this for now. Yep, and it already exists. So let's leave it for now. Yep, here it is, quick dev. I already have it set up. So yep. Now let's compile Unity X. So first of all, I clone it. Let's remove our Unity Unity Seven Two. Oh, that one. So uh, now MKDL. 
maybe uh, all the other have it. So yeah, Git clone, HTTPS, uh, GitLab.com, Ubuntu, Unity. Uh, one sec, let me just bring this thing. Yep, Ubuntu Unity uh, and Unity dash X and pure Unity X. So yeah, it already exists. So let me do one thing, get check out faster because I'm on the branch. So yeah. So now uh, we can just run this sudo QCK, or sudo no cache update in case you do not want the cache to be updated. So I done it a few hours ago, but yeah, uh, for now let's do it. Let's update the cache as well. So yeah, sudo QCK dev. one MB is yeah. Yeah, so it's built this so now you can just install it with sudo p install maybe extend on your city. So yeah, that's it. Anyways, oh, I already have it installed. So yeah, let's proceed with this. So let's first of all fix a, a tiny bug, a one line bug, for example. Uh so first of all, uh, earlier we want to pull, uh, we want to pull it out agent for obvious reasons. Uh, basically, uh, in layman's terms, uh, you could say that it's a password dialog uh, that pops up uh, that pops up when uh, say you open up an app that requires a password like H or G parted. So that's a basic description of it. Uh, so uh, we we'll, we we'll need to set up a pull it out agent here uh, for the fall. So yeah, this is a tiny change. So let's just make it right now. So yeah, Paul Kid Ganom. Paul Kid Ganom. I'll uh, wait for one sec. Was it Percy Kid Fun Ganom or was it this policy? Policy Kid One Ganom. Yeah, it was Percy Kid One Ganom. Yeah. Yep. Policy Kid Fun Ganom. Policy Kid Fun Ganom. Yeah. Uh, so now we can just add it to uh, the settings diamond file. One sec, pause. Yeah. So in here we'll just add it in, perhaps below this line. So yeah, we just done. All good. Authentication agent, authentication or agent. This particular one, so yeah, a uh, Paul kit. So I believe the path was one sec for this one. Let me just get this bit open, this handy bit open. So yeah, yeah, so the path was, yeah, so it was that was so lib all this kit all this. Policy kit. Gonna one sec. Got a message here. Gnome. A uh, policy kit. One gnome. Paul kit. I use nano as my primary text editor. So yeah. Paul kit gnome. Authentication agent. One user lab. Uh, Paul Kit. So uh, I believe uh, uh, I believe this is the path on Ubuntu. So yes, I've confirmed this, but uh, I believe on Arch it is different. So let's just add it in in case someone decides to port it to Arch. Make life easier for them. I believe this is the part on Arch. Authentication. No need. Ah, uh, the, the usual nano versus the versus Emacs. Anyways, yep. Agent one. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Oh, uh, so let's try this out. So part two, um, yep. Part two. Now let's open up a testing window. I'll also explain what it is. So yeah, uh, first of all, there's the background, but yeah. Oh, uh, it's already running the authentication agent. 
Uh, so uh, let's say opening up something like Gpathet, for example. And yeah, we got an authentication agent working. So yeah, oh, it would just crash. So yeah, this is a simple fix. And one sec, there's some Twitch error here. One sec. And so it's giving some error in Twitch, it seems. I hope it's visible. Oh, uh, can you see my screen? Or uh, on uh, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, it's working. So yeah, uh, now let's let's do the next bit. Let's see. So next, let's do one more tiny change. Uh, that is to set the XD, uh, to set the value of XDG current desktop. Because there were a number of people who were complaining that uh, NeoFetch, yeah, yeah, uh, it was. I believe it was working perfectly fine. Yet it was showing that it also yeah. And Nano. Also, I'll just uh, do one thing uh, because uh, NeoFetch. A few people were complaining that it was showing the name of the display manager in NeoFetch. So yeah, let's just set this bit. To uh, XDG card in this up one sec. Let's edit the main file. Yeah, so, so let's add it. Mm, this bit export XDG card in this up. XDG card in this up. Export XDG card in this up. It's equal to uh, let's set the DX for now. Uh, yeah, and one more bit. So yeah, first of all, now let's just check with it's so being properly or not in terms of the name of the display manager. So terminal, we want to use terminator. So yep. Let me check. Oh, no, yep. So it's now showing you in the X. So yeah, next, uh, this bit is working. So next, let's, uh, uh, so now let me take, uh, let's take a look at the Unity Control Center bit. So I already got to add, created a new branch with a few of the other fixes. So I'll demonstrate them here, uh, such as the big ones like Unity Control Center, because I was actually working on that since the last two days, because it was an extremely long one. So let me go to that. I stash, I've done hundreds, I've done hundreds of stashes today, so yep. Here, uh, but with this testing window, which uh, you'll find that this testing window with, so it's basically starting a nested X server and it's running Unity X inside that nested X server and turning on the display force. So, yeah, it's display force. So, yep, that's it. In simple words, this testing window, it, uh, you might be wondering which, what is that. So, yep. So now uh, let's get to the settings bit. So I'll show you how it was like earlier. So this is how settings was earlier. So yep. This is how it was like. So it was a small safety dialogue earlier. Now uh, let me show you what we're changing that to. By the way, I'll be releasing all of this today as RC4 of, of Unity X after this. And I'm streaming some Unity X itself. From this branch of it. So, yeah. So, the on air one. Let's go back here. So, yeah. So, in here, you'll find that. Uh, one sec. Instead of just one setting slash settings advice. So, yeah. Oh, uh, now we have multiple panels and we have the Zenipi directory. Uh, so, let me first of all go to the applications bit. on the chat let me check so uh let me just check this bit yeah oh by the way one more thing that we had to do for unity control center to get to work is or uh, to use the previous ug7 or gnome schema uh, the, the previous schemas for these two uh so one sec nano settings diamond Yeah, so in here you'll find that earlier we had some custom, that the custom is here. So get check out. Do the on air one. 
So yeah, I mean, not this one, master. Master. Yeah, so here, nano sitting time in the fish. I mean, yeah, so here, we had this special, we had this file config, config.fish, which basically contained a function to source a number of config files. It was a horrible time managing those. So basically, oh, let me show here. Oops. So here we have this bit to get the value. And this is the file which we had earlier, config, config.fish. You'll find here that, uh, one second, let me switch to comments, yes. So the OS config bit here. Uh, so earlier we just source all these files and then also so that first the OS config is sourced in the system wide in the build and the user. So the user one would override the build config and the build config would override the system wide config and so on. So yep, uh, config slash. Uh, so now, and it was a horrible pain in the neck trying to manage this config file. So this is what would happen earlier in the simple world. It wasn't lengthy, but it was. It contains MD and it was a simple, it was a simple Python script. So GTK box. So yep. And here we have. You'll find that uh, earlier we were. Oh, I mean the other one. Oh no, nope. So earlier we were just using a identity file selection song for the background. And yeah, one sec. Oh. Uh, so earlier we would just create these two directories and then we would just write the uh, we would just set the background in the config file names in the config file. So yep, this is how it was like earlier. So it would write hundreds of lines with the same text set background. So basically, uh, for the set background one, it would contain one for one background, then another background, and then another. So there would be three lines for the background itself. So yep. And so now it's this one. Check out. It's, it's, it should switch over the fish on this new boot setup. So, yep. I just switch the fish for now. So, in here, nano settings diamond. So, once I get check out. Let's switch to our uh, Daniel one. So now it's very simple. G settings get instead of that config file, etc. And that config file no longer exists. This config, nope. So yeah, uh, this is this bit has been. Uh, so we have to move that config, that special config of. So, File config, uh, file cell from ATX. So, yep. And now let me show you how we are setting it here. So, yeah, so we are now using Unity Control Center. This is the new Unity Control Center bit. Let me show you how it how it happens. So, yeah, first of all, let's just take a look at this. So, I'll just one sec. Oh, I hope it will become bigger now. Oh, one sec. Oops, I switched the workspace. Yeah. Was it all plus or what is it? All shift, not sure what it was, but yeah. So we can change it, for example, uh, to this back in one sec. Yeah, to this post background, and then we can change it back to uh to the original one or perhaps to this gray one. Yeah, so uh by the way, you might be wondering uh why we have this wallpaper worthy worthy final ubuntu.png. Uh that's because uh we are, uh, Ubuntu has retained this name. So in case you're wondering why we have a Wati wallpaper, it isn't a Wati one. This is the default Ubuntu wallpaper. So yep, let's proceed with this. And yeah, let's. And now let me show you how it's happening. So first of all, let's go to the settings directory and another settings one, applications. LS. Uh, oh, one sec, did we lose the scene? Oh, yeah, we uh, we got, I got an error uh, saying that the Twitch team is no longer working or something like that. So, yep, I got that error. I stopped. So, yeah. UTX appearance at panel, not this one. Oh, one sec. 
panel Unity X background uh, background panel. So yeah, here are a few of the panels. And now uh, the main bit is Unity X Control Center. You might be wondering why we have a separate desktop file for Unity Control Center. That's because uh, one sec as well. Nano user share applications. Thanks. User share applications. Once, yeah. So we want to uh, check Unity Control Center. So here, uh, this file is basically the same, just that in here, uh, here you'll see that only on, there's this line only shown is equal to Unity Seven. So. Oh yeah, so I was uh, oh so it wasn't working. Yeah, so I was basically uh, now showing how Unity Control Center works. Let me show it again in case you didn't see it, as it stopped working on Fetch. So yeah, this is how it was working. UTX Control Center. So the background. So uh, this we have implemented Unity. Uh, I can, I can, I. Yep, so I was, uh, so uh, as it wasn't working, I was adding in GT, I was setting up Unity Control Center. So here uh, we can set the background with Unity Control Center now, the theme and background. So uh, we have to use UT Control Center now in Unity X, or it was just a ZNT dialog. So yep, let's take it out. So let me just show it working. Let's change it. Yep, so here's the background, yep, and, and it works. So uh, we got it to work basically because uh, UT Control Center here only shown is equal to Unity 7. This basically means that it will only appear in Unity 7, or your Unity Control Center will only appear in Unity 7. So uh, we wanted, we also wanted it to appear in Unity X. So while we could add in Unity X here, I didn't want to make any change to Unity, uh, Unity Control Center upstream. So yep, we have this here, only shown is equal to Unity 7 and the separate desktop file for Unity X. Because I didn't want to change the source code for Unity uh, for, in, for Unity Control Center. So yep, we have this separate desktop file and now, uh, so we have our custom panels as well for Unity Control Center, such as Unity X background panel. Name is equal to background comment is change the background. So yep, exact. Uh, so we have this custom uh yeah. So uh, we have this custom uh, settings, we have this custom settings panel such as the background one. Uh so we also here's where we have the desktop file for the custom uh, for the custom panel and yep. X is equal to this. So this is basically a for to launch the background panel, which I'll be showing now and only showing in Unity X so that uh, it doesn't appear when the person is using Unity 7 and it only appears in Unity X. So this is uh, basically so that uh, if, if say you decide that you need to run it from the command line, you need to open up in the background sections from the command line. So for example, Unity control center, Thanks. Uh, UD Control Center. Uh, so, uh, yep, uh, if say I do it with background, for example. Uh, so it will just open up the background dialog, for example, uh, here. Whereas, uh, so, oh, so this is this bit uh, here, XNG settings panel is equal to background. And the same applies for the theme bit as well. Uh, theme. Yeah, so it opened up the theme section, the theme panel. Yeah, so uh, here, we have this bit, and next, by the way, let me close this. I don't want to swap file. Hang it down. So, yep. This bit is done, and we want the other bit as well, the theme panel. So, it's basically the same, just that we are launching the theme that we bit, and Xfinity settings panel is equal to theme. So, yeah, let's proceed with the other bit, these files. So, yeah, in settings, let's say CD settings. 
Puis il y a Nano, back down the tree. Import the ISO. This is the, uh, so here basically we are getting, I should, uh, currently uh, we are using, we are just detecting based on the file extension, although ideally we should be using MAMI types. I'll be taking a look at implementing that soon. Using MAMI types, it's a uh, file extensions. So yeah, this is a simple Python script. Basically, uh, what it does is this. You might have noticed this Zenify folder. So Zenify is a dead project from 2018, I believe, yeah, 2018 or 2017, uh, which uh, which was basically like Zenify for Python, which is basically what we needed. So uh, because we can't use uh, PyPy here uh, in the debit file, obviously, as this is an APT package, so yeah. Zenify.py. So this is the Zenify stuff which we have uh, put in here. So I just git loaned it in, uh, into this, copied in it.py. Hi, Yang Ben. So uh, Zenify.py. So here uh, so we have uh, Zenify bit. So yep, this is Zenify. And we have the init.py as well of um, the repo. So, but then that's GUI, for example. So here we are just basically uh, importing Zenify as well. And here, instead of writing, instead of writing a separate GTK dot application instance. So instead of that, we are just using Zenify here. Zenify dot list. Uh, background images and text is equal to this. So yeah, we are using Zenify for this bit, and then we are using Geo dot settings instead of G settings here. Uh, for for setting the background and for getting and now let me also show the theme bit which is way more complicated so yeah so this is the theme bit so this is the current theme and it will get the name of the theme the reason why i'm using python uh instead of say uh, uh, uh instead of say zenity i mean i'm using it instead of fish with zenity uh, is because there were a number of issues with commands or uh, substitution. For example, uh, uh, it will also include the std out of Unity Control Center. So, so that's why we're using this here, or we're using Python, although I would have preferred using fish. So this is the theme bit. The current theme is this. And yeah, one more thing that I wanted to say was, in case you are trying to develop your own desktop environment, for example, and you want to use UT Control Center for some reason, I don't know, but yeah, in case you're interested in using UT Control Center and you want to preserve the UT7 settings, you might have searched, for example, on Google or DuckDuckGo uh, for, uh, you might have searched for uh, on DuckDuckGo or Google for, mm, or like, yeah, for uh, for setting the uh, for showing all the settings of UT Control Center outside in the seven one sec. I've got a question on Ubuntu podcast chat. Uh, I guess thanks. Uh, so uh, so nano theme that goes so here. Uh, if say you're trying to show all the up uh, you're trying to show all the settings of. UT control center. So then you might have, there are a few solutions which you'll find like this one, uh, which tells you that you need to use SDG current desktop is equal to Unity. This only shows some of the settings uh, in reality because of some of these, uh, for example, uh, let me show you online accounts, user share applications, user share applications and UAT, uh, Online accounts, the desktop. So yeah, so Unity control. Uh, so in here we have only showing is equal to Unity. So this bit is visible, but if say we try to show the appearance bit once, it is. Uh, where am I typing? Oops, I was typing there. I can't actually see this bit. Yeah, fine. Unity, uh, say uh, appearance panel the desktop. Yeah, so uh, categories is equal to this. So, yep, we have here we have uh, Unity controls. One sec. Yeah, so here we have only showing is equal to Unity 7 instead of Unity, uh, instead of Unity, which is why it does not appear in, it doesn't appear 
uh, in Unity Control Center when you set it to uh, Unity. So you you'll want to use is equal to Unity seven. So yeah, it wants in the other screen. So yep, appearances this. So now all the settings of Unity seven are visible outside Unity seven. Let me proceed with the other stuff now. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to do. So yeah, uh, one more bit. Uh, we also have a new logout dialog. I guess I'm outside. That. Yep. Let me finish this off quickly. So yeah. Uh, oh, I'm in this like you never mind. Nano design. Widgets. Uh, not widgets. One sec. Dialogs. And I'm streaming this from Unity X, not any other desktop environment for information. Yeah, so uh, in here we have, this is a simple uh, logout file, uh, simple Zenity uh, office script with Zenity. So yep, it does, it performs a simple task of being a, of being a logout dialog. So let me show you uh, here in session, yep. So yes, this is that dialog. Log out, suspend, shut down, or reboot. So yeah, that's what it does. Or oh, anything else that I'll be showing. Nope, so let's just proceed uh, with merging this. So I created, I created a pull request uh, for this here to merge this branch into the main UTX repo. So yeah, one sec, reload. For some reason, it decided that there are 10 comments, one sec. Hmm, let's just push it over. So yeah, let's proceed with uh, merging this. Don't delete the source branch and squash comment. So let's merge it now. So it's in merge requests. Uh, if you just open it up, you the X, uh, you'll find this merge request section and you can click on so, so I'm merging my, I'm merging this branch into, into the Unity X repo into master. So yep, merge. Oops. Anyway, sorry. Yes, never mind. I just did that. It's the word. Okay, fine. Never mind. So yep, let's just delete it for now. So never mind. Yeah. Uh, and once you have it, you know. Uh, Artyom, I've answered, I've answered your question already in low media development, UB ports, low media development. So, so uh, here, this bit is done. Now, I've merged it now, so now uh, you can, let's also just take a look at it. Everything, so for example, the settings bit, one more bit that, uh, I forgot this one that, uh, for example, earlier it would be, it would be, uh, uh, earlier it would, it would just be, the word people would just be said at the, at, uh, during the login, uh, while it, uh, uh, during the login, uh, when, uh, when the session is started, it would just say the word people once. But uh, we also want to be able to uh, change it without having to log out and log in. No, it is not. It is on my primary machine. I'm using it as my main machine. I'm streaming from Unity X. Also, fish see one sec. So here we now have a while to loop in which obviously we don't want it to keep on changing it for without update. So yep, sleep one. And then so every one second it will it will set the background. Uh, so, testing window, for example, and the theme bit of oh, one sec. Right now, I've set it to yellow dark. So, yep. Let's also change the wallpaper. Uh, and I'll show you uh, this bit. Oh, uh, nope. I don't think it should be. Uh, we, I'm looking into uh, using uh, Wayfire uh, as an alternative to XFWM soon, and it uses VLAN, so yeah, take a look at it soon. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the session. So, 
so yeah uh let's uh next let me show you what is like uh this theme bit however uh it does not change uh if you can like the wallpaper does so yeah so no uh you you will still have to log out and log in uh for the theme to change but yeah i'll be working on it soon Oh uh, yes, it will. Oh yes, it will. Yeah, it will. So, uh, so one more bit. Sick. So, uh, I'll now be releasing uh this RC four. So you might have noticed here, but. There was a file named Unity X 10.0 RC4 MD64. So, yeah, in here, so examine one sec. I hope. One sec. Yeah, so there's a thing in the background here. And those things that went examine the fish. I guess that's about it. I guess that's about it for now. Uh, so uh, uh, that's about it. So yeah, due to lack of time, we'll have to end here. So I'll probably take up the. Uh, I'll probably take up the rest in. What? Uh, what? What? I, why is it clever? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there's so much more I wanted to do. Uh, so I'll now be releasing RC4. Uh, so keep an eye out on the Twitter account for Unity uh, for Unity X. Uh, so, so and Ubuntu UT, So you might want to keep an eye out there. And thank you everyone for joining in. And see you next time. Bye.